Welcome back guys. This is the fifth video of the Golang restaurant management backend series. So in this video, we are going to start working on our models. In the previous video, we had done um, the you know, outlines of our controller functions. And now let's start working on the models. So, uh, so, so let's work on the food model because that's the you know, easiest one. So all the files in uh, the models folder will have package models just like we did with controllers and routes all right so this will be package models and then you're going to import a couple of things i know that i'll need time because i'll have to have updated at and created at those two uh, timestamps so i need the time package and obviously since we're mo working with mongodb i'll need the mongodb dot org slash mongo driver slash bson slash primitive All right, so here you create a struct. Struct is like your own uh, data type, which contains multiple different data types. So for example, you have ID, right? And you have name and you have price, but these ID name and price will, will be of type, let's say name will be of type string, price will be of type load 64 and ID will be of type primitive dot object ID and here we define what it's going to look like when the data com comes from the data database so it's going to be bson and it's going to look like this ID so if you worked with mongodb you know that ID is the first field always underscore ID so our uh, Golang program now knows that okay, when when uh, you know something that comes from the d uh, database looking like ID like this, that's basically ID and it's of type primitive object ID. And for name also we'll do the same. So we'll say JSON name, and we'll also use validation. So we'll say validate required minimum two maximum 100 now make sure you don't leave any spaces here because this, our validation function won't be able to read those spaces it'll get confused right it'll say that uh, you have some fields missing in the validation and it's not working so make sure there are, no, there are no spaces here for price we'll have json price and enclose price and name like i've done in double inverted commas and then you'll write to validate required all right and with, then you'll have your food underscore image we'll have created underscore at updated underscore at food underscore ID menu underscore ID I'll just increase some spaces here just to make it more readable now food image is of type string because we're not storing the storing the Im, uh, image itself. We're storing just the link of the image, right? So here we'll say JSON food image field and validate it's required. Created at time dot time. Here also time dot time food ID is string menu ID is string and for created at you'll have JSON created underscore at here the C is not capital F is not capital, P is not capital, N is not capital because that's how you store data in MongoDB. But when you're working with Golang, you have N capital, P capital, F capital, C capital, all of that. So these are the differences between this and this. And at the database level, you can you could call that field something else as well. It won't matter, but you just need to specify here what you're going to call it. So you're done with updated at as well. 
and food ID. Menu ID and validate required. Now when I'm saving it, all the spaces are going away, but that's all right. You know, I can't do without saving it. So I'll just save it. I'll close this file and let's open up our invoice model. All right. So the first thing that you'll do is say package models and you'll import a couple of things. So one of them is time because you need those timestamps and then you need your MongoDB slash sorry dot org slash mongo driver slash pson slash primitive and so invoice is of type struct and you have id here you have invoice id you have order id and payment underscore method payment underscore status and payment underscore due underscore date created underscore at updated underscore at so just like we did here the prim the ID will be primitive dot object ID and in BSON it will look like something like this underscore ID and enclosed within those double inverted commas invoice ID is string order ID is string again payment method is star and string and payment uh, sorry S needs to be small and payment due date needs to be time dot time where we're using our time uh, package created at also will be the same and updated at will also be the same so all three of these are uh, basically timestamps all right and here we'll have json invoice id and here you'll have JSON order ID JSON payment method and then you'll validate so it'll say is equal to card or cash right so you'll say is equal to either card or is equal to cash or equal to nothing so this is basically uh, a type of enum right in uh, in node.js or in javascript you have enum here you have this basically which uh, we're just giving those three values with which it can equate and your payment status will have validate required equal to it can either be pending or is equal to paid and json you'll have payment due date and in json you'll have created at and here you'll have updated at all right so your invoice model is also complete now let's look at our menu model this again quite straightforward but it will have um, some differences so let's go to so let's call it package models and let's import the same things 
I need the time package and I need mongo db go dot mongodb dot org slash mongo driver slash bson slash primitive type menu struct then you have id name category of menu so these i've already shown you in the postman collection when i ran the project and showed you the demo then you have start date you have end date created at updated at these are our timestamps and then you have your menu id so here you'll have primitive dot object id and json which is standard we've done this for all of the other ones as well name as you know is string category as you know is string start date end dates are from the time package created at updated at are also from the time package and menu id is a string and here we'll do the same thing again it's going to be name and then we'll have validate and all that i'll have for validate is that it's basically required and here i'll have category and in validate as well i'll just have required you can free feel free to make changes as you like i'm keeping these required you can add more validation or completely remove validation so that they're not required that's completely up to you and in json this is end date so d is small and here json created at json updated at and json food id so that's your menu and in your food uh, model when you see you've already given a reference to the menu id right and that's why it's a star in case you're wondering because menu id is coming from here right so that's your menu id and food id so your menu food and invoice models are all complete now let's start looking at the other one so we have achieved quite a bit in this video uh, we're done with our food model invoice menu and um, I'm running a little short on time. So tomorrow I'll continue with order item, order table and user models. And again, and also the node models. And once we're done with the models, in the next video, we'll start looking at uh, the controllers, the actual functions inside those controllers. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe to the channel so that you come to know when the next video of the series comes out. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.